My name is Louisa Ashton from the Little Angel Theatre and I'm going to be reading The Selfish Giant. Once, there was a garden that belongs to a giant. It's a big garden, far too big just for one old giant on his own. And it had the best kind of trees for climbing and the best kind of grass for running around on. Every afternoon, as they were coming home from school, children would go and play in the giant's garden. They loved it. Across the grass stood beautiful flowers like stars. There were so many trees, and in the springtime there were delicate blossoms of pink and pearl, and in the autumn there was rich fruit. The birds sat on the trees and sang so sweetly that the children would stop in their tracks and try to find which tree each bird was in. The children were very happy. Now you see, the giant didn't know the children were playing in his garden. He was a grumpy sort of giant. He liked things to always be done in the same way and he didn't like people meddling in his business. He had been visiting his friend, the Cornish Ogre, and had stayed with him for seven years. But then one day, the giant came back home. When he arrived, he saw the children playing in the garden, climbing the trees and running across his beloved lawn. What are you doing here? He cried in a gruff voice, and the children ran away. My own garden is my own garden, said the giant. Anyone can understand that, and I will allow nobody to play in it but me. So he built a high wall around it and put up a big sign. The sign said, trespassers will be prosecuted. The problem was, half the children couldn't yet read the sign, and the rest of them didn't know what silly words like trespassers and prosecuted meant. What they did know was that the giant definitely didn't want them in their garden. So the children had nowhere to play and they decided that he was a very selfish giant. Then the spring came and all over the country there was little blossoms and little birds. Only in the garden of the selfish giant it was still winter. The birds did not care to sing in it as there were no children and the trees forgot to blossom. Once a beautiful flower put its head out from the grass, but when it saw the angry sign, it slipped back into the ground again and went off to sleep. The only ones who were pleased were the snow and the frost. Spring's forgotten this garden, they cried, so we will live here all year round. The snow covered up the grass with her great white cloak and the frost painted all the trees silver. I cannot understand why the spring is so late in coming, said the selfish giant, as he looked out on his cold white garden. But the spring never came, nor the summer. The autumn gave golden fruit to every garden, but to the giant's garden, she gave none. He's too selfish, she said. So it was always winter there, and the north wind and the hail and the frost and the snow danced about through the trees. One morning, the giant was lying awake in bed when he heard some lovely music. It was a little linnet bird singing outside his window. But it was so long since he heard a bird sing in his garden that it seemed to him to be the most beautiful music in the world. I believe spring has come at last, said the giant, and he jumped out of bed and looked out. What did he see? The most wonderful thing. Through a little hole in the wall, the children had crept in, and the trees were so glad to have the children back again that they covered themselves in blossoms. The birds were flying about and twittering with delight, and the flowers were looking up through the green grass. Then the children started to climb up into the trees until every tree had a child in it. Except one. In the farthest corner of the garden 
sat a little boy, crying. He was so small that he couldn't reach up into the branches of the tree. The poor tree tried to bend its branches down as low as it could, but the little boy was too tiny. And the giant's heart melted. How selfish I've been, he said. Now I know why the spring won't come back here. He was really very sorry for shutting the world out of his big, beautiful garden. So he crept downstairs and opened the front door quite softly and went out into the garden. But when the children saw him, they were so frightened that they all ran away. Only the little boy on the ground did not run. The giant was desperate not to scare him off. So all he did was gently point towards the high branches of the tree. The little boy looked at the giant's eyes and found kindness there. So the little boy nodded and the giant lifted him up and put him in the tree. And the tree broke into blossom and the birds came and sang in it and the little boy stretched out his two arms and flung them round the giant's neck and hugged him. It had been a long time since the giant had had a hug from anyone. And the other children? When they saw that the giant was no longer angry, they all came running back. This is your garden now, said the giant. And he took a great axe and knocked down the wall and pulled down the angry sign. And from then on, the children came every day to play in the giant's garden. And in the evening, they would come to him and say goodbye. But every day, the giant would ask, where is your little companion? He said, the boy I put in the tree. We don't know, answered the children. He's gone away. We don't know where he lives. And we've never seen him before. This made the giant very sad. Every afternoon when school was over, the children came and played with the giant. Years went by. And the giant grew very old, very wise, and even kinder. Soon, his bones were too slow to play about every day. So he would sit in a chair by the window, watching over the garden and the children. Until one bright winter morning, the giant looked out of his window and stared. He rubbed his eyes in wonder and stared out the window couldn't believe it. In the farthest corner of the garden, under the same tree, was the little boy. The giant ran outside as fast as his bones could take him. Where have you been? Why did you not come back? And why are you still as I remember? I've grown old as the trees, but you are still so young, asked the giant. And the child smiled at the giant and said, once you let me play in your garden, and you've been here a long time, letting so many more children share it. Now maybe it's time for you to come with me, and we could see all the gardens the world has to offer. And leave my garden here, asked the giant. The children will look after it, said the boy. The giant looked around, he understood it was time to say goodbye. Okay, said the giant, let's go. And they left together. And the birds sang, and the trees grew taller and deeper, and the soil rolled and turned. And in the years that followed, the children told each other stories of an unselfish giant who left them such a wonderful place, all of their own. The end.